When I first got promoted at Amazon to a senior SDE, a lot of things changed for me. I didn't have the luxury of spending most of my day coding or tackling complex problems anymore. A lot of the responsibilities tended to change, and it wasn't something that I was really expecting. I kind of started to feel a little bit lonely in the sense that when I was in SD2, I was constantly in the weeds, solving the very specific problems, looking at the logs, checking the databases, debugging, doing all the hands-on things pretty much every day. And when you're a senior SD and as you kind of move up the ladder at these larger fan companies, your responsibilities drastically change. No longer are you spending every minute of your day solving these complex problems. Maybe some of your time will be spent on that, but more so you have other responsibilities like mentoring, like interviewing, like growing others, like deciding strategically what your team and your organization is going to be working on. And for me, this was a bit of a shock because I wasn't really used to this and wasn't really expecting it. And so I quickly started to look for resources because I was feeling a little bit lonely in terms of didn't really have anyone to talk to anymore. A bunch of my friends were still SD2 and didn't really understand the problems that I was speaking about. I tried to talk to others, but kind of wasn't really working for me. So I decided to look elsewhere. And that kind of brings me to the topic of today's video, which is this book that I stumbled on. And it's The Staff Engineer by Will Larson. Um, this is a book that I read a couple years ago. It's pretty fresh. Will Larson is a pretty well-known uh, figure in, I guess, the tech space, you could say. He's got a newsletter. He's got another book on uh, management as well, if you're interested in that. And this book is all about kind of what you do as a staff engineer, like, like what your responsibilities are, what you should be thinking about, and some of the different challenges that you'll face. And uh, as I started to read it, it gave me a lot more kind of comfort knowing that how I was spending my day, maybe a lot less time actually coding and more, more so, you know, thinking about architecture and strategically, it wasn't a waste. It wasn't for nothing. And just knowing that it fit into this larger picture was really, really helpful. And something that I found pretty interesting about this book is that he defines these four different archetypes of, I guess, staff engineers or senior engineers. And uh, it, it was weird because as I read them and he described them, I instantly had these thoughts of people that fit into these, uh, I guess, buckets or categories. Uh, so let me recite them for you here. So there's the, the tech lead. The tech lead is the person that kind of reports to one manager. He guides that team uh, in terms of the implementation and architecture and sometimes other teams as well in the space. And then there is the architect, which is someone that sits a little bit higher up and then kind of makes architectural decisions. And sometimes they're specialized in certain areas, could be like security or certain specialties. And then there's the solver, which is the person that gets really deep in an area and can kind of get their hands dirty and specialize in a certain kind of uh, domain. And then there's the right hand, which is kind of like the extension of an executive, like someone that kind of speaks for an executive or a leader, but through a technical lens. And instantly I could think of four different people that fit into these four different buckets and it defined them almost perfectly. Uh, so this was really helpful, this book, because it kind of gave me a framework to think about this. Like, what style am I? What do I want to be? Is this a fluid thing where you're constantly moving between these different archetypes? Or is this something where it's kind of fixed? And kind of I started to realize that it can be fluid. Um, and it can't be something that you kind of move through depending on the situation that you're tossed into. Um, so anyways, I'm rambling a bit here, but really good book from that perspective and describing kind of what, ex what is expected of you for in these more senior roles. Uh, talks about some other really important areas too, like when to consider management, whether or not you should consider management, what does that role look like and what may you regret or not regret. I have a video on kind of going to manager uh, that you can check out and kind of what I thought about that experience as well. I'll try to link that up here. Uh, also talks about other important things like the value of building a network and having people to talk to quite honestly about the challenges that you're having and for them to come to you to share with you the, the challenges, almost like a, a peer group where you kind of get through certain issues together and get it get very candid advice. Um, also talks about kind of the importance about being a multiplying factor. So part of your role, especially as you grow up in these levels, is that uh, you need to enable others and you need to delegate to others and do things that kind of make others better or faster so that you can work through other people and not just through your own two hands. And kind of giving you advice and giving you mechanisms to do that is also helpful in this book. One thing that I wanted to point out that I almost forgot was something that maybe some folks won't like about this book, but something that I really enjoyed and it's probably my favorite part about it. Now, more than half of the book is kind of interviews that Will Larson does of other senior engineers, principal engineers, staff engineers at a variety of different tech companies. 
And some of you may cringe a little bit and say like, really, that's half the book. But honestly, this was practically the most enjoyable part for me because it was such a candid look into how these people think and how I can aspire to be them and how maybe I should be thinking as I grow forward. Um, so there's about 10 or so interviews, I want to say, about these different folks from a variety of different companies, but it really gives you a good perspective on kind of what the role looks like and the slight deviations between the different companies and kind of the different archetypes that people fall into across these companies. So that's something to point out that I think you should be aware of if you decide to buy this book. Um, so anyways, this is a book that's available now. It's uh, on Amazon, all those places. It costs about $30 Canadian. It's probably like $25 American or something like that, but very, very much. Uh, worth it. But yeah, I'll leave a link down below to where you can get it on Amazon. It's an affiliate link, by the way. It helps me and it also helps the author pretty much 99% uh, of it goes to the author. Um, but anyways, I hope you kind of got something out of this. And if you're in a similar situation to me, like you just got into these senior roles and you're struggling to find yourself a little bit and just looking for kind of a framework to think about your new position, I highly suggest you picking up this book. So thanks so much. I'll see you in the next